I forgot to press film on the camera. Did all this, ate it, looked up, the, f the camera wasn't filming. Mmm, oh wow. Hi and a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Have you ever had black rice before or forbidden rice? It's called forbidden, apparently it used to only be for nobility, but now it's available to the peasants. If you haven't tried it, I highly suggest now is the time to give it a try. This is one of the most nuttiest, most flavoursome, delicious rice that I've ever had. And I've been enjoying it so much in Southeast Asia that I wanted to experiment with how to cook it. I've heard many people say that it needs to be soaked overnight or for hours. Well, I just feel that can't be the most optimal way of cooking black rice. So I've come up with a technique that will have this from packet to cooked in 15 minutes. Now, as I always say, a saucepan with a good solid base to it so it disperses the heat. It's the best way to cook rice. I'm gonna pour this into the saucepan and I'm gonna rinse this through two or three times to get that inky purple starch out of it. Now you can keep rinsing and rinsing. Somebody said to me the other day, would it eventually go white? I don't think so. This thing is packed full of a beautiful, rich purple starch, but we want to get rid of quite a bit of it before the cook. You don't need to rinse hundreds of times because we'll deal with the last of the starch at the end of the cook. So that's gonna be my last rinse. We've got some of the starch out. We want to drain off all oh, 90% of the water. Just keep those little grains in there if you can. And then with all Steve's Kitchen cooking rice methods, one cup of rice, add one cup of water. We're gonna pop that onto our heat source on a high heat. Add a little pinch of salt. And I'm gonna bring that up to a simmer the same way I would white rice. Just as soon as I start to see the edge of the rice dancing in the simmer, I'm going to actually turn this heat to its lowest possible setting, so almost to a candle. This is one of the most interesting rices to cook with. I thought this would cook in the 10 minute method I use for white and brown rice, but it wasn't ready. It needed extra cooking. These little rice grains, they really resist absorbing water. But you don't want to over rinse or drain or soak this rice because you're gonna get rid of a lot of those beautiful nutrients. And the rice itself, when it's served, should have a little al dente, little nuttiness to it, which is part of the flavors and the complexity of this rice. So I stand by, this is my method for perfectly cooking this rice and getting it to the table without destroying some of the benefits of eating the rice in the first place. And if you could see through that inky water, you'd see that the edge of the red rice is just starting to bubble. So now we want to turn the heat off and you're going to take a cloth or a tea towel, place it over the top of the pan and pop a lid on, a good tight fitting lid, and then just fold the corners in to keep it away from the heat source or the flame. Turn the gas back on, put it down to its lowest setting. You can almost do this on a candle now. We're gonna pop that on there and leave that to cook for 15 minutes, no longer. And during the cooking process, the rice is gonna to continue to produce this wonderful inky starch, but we don't really wanna serve the rice with that starch, so I'm gonna be rinsing off. Get yourself a kettle, Boil some water, because you're gonna need it when the rice is cooked. Let's get this off the heat. So, 15 minutes, optimum cooking time for this rice. Let me just take the lid off. Ooh. Now you'll see, I get a spoon. There is quite a thick, like a black ink at the bottom of the pan. And I'll be honest, that isn't pleasant to serve. So what I do at this moment, I've got a kettle full of boiled water. I'm just gonna add that in, just, turn the, the camera down a little bit. So I'm going to add that in and just stir the rice through. And what we're gonna do is just strain this rice off. Look at that purple liquid. So we strain it off, add a little more hot water over the rice, just to wash off any of that residual starch. And you'll see underneath just how much of that starch has come through into the water again. Pop that through a second time. And that is it. Still piping hot, ready to serve, but lovely and fluffy, perfectly cooked, forbidden black rice. Now it's not a, a sticky rice. It's a beautiful, light, almost, uh, almost like a basmati, but the taste is hard to explain. 
there's almost a fruity sort of plummy taste to this. Mm. This will stay for a long time. It will stay warm for a long time if you pop it back in the pan and place the lid back on and that'll stay warm, ready to serve for another 45 minutes or so. If you don't like that al dente, little nuttiness, you can cook it for an extra minute or two, but I, I suggest actually just leaving it on the side like this. Those grains will continue to fluff up. We've gone from the optimum amount. It's one cup of water to one cup of rice. And that's the same when you cook any rice. It's the optimum level. It's really difficult to explain the flavor. It's, it's forbidden rice flavor. It's, it's really unusual, a little sweet a little nutty, a little sort of grape or plummy. Maybe that's the colors that are giving that to me. It's a lovely loose rice. It's got texture. It's rice that needs chewing. I love to serve this mix through with a little cooked sweet corn. I think the colors look really great, the goldness of the sweet corn. So you can make a little rice salad with it. If you've got any ideas how you like to serve this black rice, if you've already cooked it before and you have a preference. For example, one of my all time favorite ways is to cook this up with a little bit of coconut milk and they make a sweet dessert. This is in Malaysia and other parts of Southeast Asia. Really delicious sweet dessert. I think I've got a recipe for that on my channel. If I haven't, let me know at some point, maybe I'll, I'll share it. I'm gonna make something. I want a little dish. I haven't had breakfast this morning, so I'm gonna have a little something very simple. What I'm gonna do is uh, take a little of my, my black rice and about an equal amount of sweet corn. Next, I'm just gonna take a, a little tuna, maybe half a small can. I'll take a heaped teaspoon of mayonnaise, a little black pepper, Take a little bit of coriander. I'm possibly going a little overkill, but I just like to add a bit of color. Add that in with my tuna. A tiny splash of wine vinegar, just to cut through the mayo. Let's try and make this look half pretty. Take that tuna mayonnaise, pop it on top. Add a little sprig coriander on the top. That's the strangest cobbled together dish I've probably ever made, but uh, it does kind of look quite pretty. Let's give this a try. I had nothing planned at all. I was just going to cook the rice, but uh, very colorful. Some of you may know this is the second take. I forgot to press film on the camera. Did all this, ate it, looked up. The camera wasn't filming. So let's tuck in. Mmm. Oh, wow. Now that really is quite delicious. I'm quite surprised. I love the nuttiness of the rice with the sweetness of the sweet corn. A little bit of coriander is coming through as well. Mm. Perfect. I'd love to know what you do with the black rice or what you have done with the black rice. It goes very well with sweet things like pineapple and mango. And I think I've already mentioned with coconut milk and a little bit of salt. This is a really versatile, very delicious rice. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. It's no longer a forbidden rice. We can all eat it. So enjoy, take care and I will, whoops, I will see you in the next video. Be good. I urge you to give it a try. It's one of the most delicious rice. Rices? <laughs> it's one of the most delicious rice I've ever had. Good morning and a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Have you ever, have you ever? Say goodbye, Coriander. Goodbye. A little mango sticky rice afterwards, perhaps. <laughs> okay. No, not okay. Ooh, close your eyes and you're on the streets of Bangkok.